We're like his human pets. <laughs> so rude. Hi, Pepper. He's usually visit every day. Good morning. Sometimes he wants food. Oh, comfy baby. Sometimes he just wants to hang out and wants affection. Did you malfunction? Everything's on his terms. <laughs> Don't. Hi, my name is Joe, and this is Pepe's story for GOPs. Pepe! Pepe definitely recognizes his name, and when we call him, he flies over and will land either on our arm, sometimes on our head, our shoulder. Good morning! <gasps> Feeling better? He's always shown an attachment to my dog, Zena. Zini, where's Pepe? Oh, there he is. We go out on a walk and he just follows us. Hi! Happy Tales! We brought him home, put him in the backyard. Since he was so little, his instinct was to cry for food. I recorded the sound of his little baby paws with my phone and then we turned it into like an mp3 file and then played it on speakers. And we would leave that playing outside for hours every day to try to lure parents or other crows. None of them ever came to check on him. So we continued to take care of him. It was a lot of research. He was mostly outside. We have this large barrel, okay. and so we had his little nesting area in there for him. We really tried to limit it, our interaction, and try to give him as much of a normal environment as possible and adapt his environment as he grew. We have a catio built outside. We temporarily kicked out the cat from the catio <laughs> for a bit and had him stay in there for a couple hours every day while he got the hang of flying. And one day we couldn't find him. He managed to fly up to the tree. So we were like, oh my gosh. We hoped for the best. We had to have faith. Ever since I've known him, he's been a little fighter. Eventually he started looking for bigger and better trees to sleep in. It seems like every instinct that a crow should have, he has, including being wary of strangers. Just because he's accepted myself, my husband, my mom, our dog, he will not accept visitors that come into our house. He will not get close to strange dogs or strange people. The gardeners come over sometimes and they'll try to call him over and he just stays on the tree and he's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know you. It's just incredible that we were able to find the balance of making him a self-sufficient wild animal and him still choosing to come to us. He has a fear of missing out. We call it FOMO. <laughs> if he's present, he needs to be involved and included in everything. You're so helpful! He usually comes every day. The longest he has been away has been a week and a half. I missed you, Pepe. Sometimes he'll visit once a day. How are you? Sometimes he'll visit up to three times a day. <laughs> and I'm not sure what external factors determine how long he decides to stay with us. Sometimes he does bring a friend over. There's been one or two other crows that have come by and I throw food for them on the roof because they're not comfortable coming down into the backyard, but they hang out on the power lines and they kind of just watch him, his interactions with us. And it's really interesting. Like I'm wondering what is going on through the minds of his other crow friends that are seeing his interaction. And I almost feel like it was like a friend telling this new crow, like, you've got to see this with your own eyes. You won't believe that Pepe has human pets. Bless you. He has us very well trained because everything is on his terms. You want some more snacks? Pepe, your breath is stinking. If he wants to come inside the house, he's welcome to come inside the house. If he wants to stay out there, he can stay out there.
she's very, very fluffy and he loves going up to her. I did a lot of training with Zena to make sure that every time Peppa was around, she got a lot of treats and praise and rewards for being patient and tolerant of Peppa because he could be a little mean sometimes, <laughs> a little invasive. Okay, Peppa. That's enough. My dog has indoor outdoor access and we saw her, Zina and Pepe just hanging out in the backyard together alone and they were just there in the backyard. Anything that she smells, obviously with her good sense of smell, she goes up to trees and grass and that's how she's enriching herself on her walks. And Pepe's on the ground next to her and since he wants to be involved in whatever she's interested in, he has to go up to the tree too. But since he doesn't have the same sense of smell that she does, I think he's always a little confused about what makes that grass spot so interesting like why is Zena so interested in this spot and there's nothing here but he still has to make sure he needs to be sure just in case he tries to put his food in my shoes or in certain places that are not always the best hiding places. He will hide food, meat on the ground in our backyard and my dog goes right behind him <laughs> and picks up all of the meat that he just hit on the ground, much to his disappointment. <laughs> I think then he learns from those experiences and next time hides his food a little better. We have some metal vents on the roof of our house. He'll take a big chunk of raw meat, which is what we give him most of the time, and he takes it up there. I've seen him from my office window take a very toasty piece out and eat that, and then leave the rest of the rarer meat back into the vent, and then just save it for later. <laughs> Did you bring us a gift? One time he brought a used mascara wand. He has managed to become independent and that's the main thing I wanted for him. It's such a funny thing to watch when Pepe sunbathes. He puts on such a goofy face and such a goofy position that you can't help but laugh. Did you break Pepe? And he loves to do this. So it's definitely a common crow behavior, but I think it's not something that's commonly witnessed because the crow obviously needs to be very comfortable to put themselves in a, such a vulnerable position, but he's extremely comfortable around us and including Xena. So he will just sunbathe anywhere. It's believed that they sunbathe to help keep their feathers healthy and also help drive away potential parasites that may be on the feathers. <laughs> I think it's really important for people to know as cool as a pet crow is, first of all, it's not allowed. And second of all, they are wild animals and they're not going to live a full and enriching life caged up. I love showing other people how cool animals can be, especially the animals in our own coexisting with us, living in our backyards, in our front yards, in our cities and suburbs. Crows are really just like any other animal with the exception that they are extremely smart. They're very, very intelligent. They're very complex and very social creatures. No barking. If you befriend a crow, you're gonna have a friend for life. 